Welcome to Road to Detailing. In this video, you are going to see Bleeding Rim, Pink Snow Foam, and Quad Shampoo with a few other products from Tenzi's Detailer range while doing an exterior wash on this lovely beamer. If you are following the channel since a while, you might realize one common thing in regards to the brands which recently appeared on the channel. Yes, Tenzi is another brand which manufactured in Poland, but I love to see the expansion of these kind of small brands on the UK slash Europe market. For full disclosure, I received these products from Tenzi Ireland for free of charge with the freedom of my words, so let's see how they perform. First, you are going to see two slightly different approaches, how I usually clean the wheels which aren't in a bad shape at all to be honest. Bleeding Rim is a pH neutral iron and fallout remover which claims to remove stubborn metallic dirt, rust and brake dust from wheels, paintwork and gloss. Following the instructions, I'm going to spray this onto the wheel, let it well for 2 minutes, then rinse off with a high pressured water. So the recommended method what you can see is basically a touchless cleaning or I should have said the ironizing process and now you're probably asking me why I didn't do any rinse off prior spraying the product on the wheel. But the reason is very simple, I want to see how the product performs on the way the manufacturer designed that to be used. However, if I would ask you the question like how to use an iron and fallout remover, meaning would you use that before? or after the general wheel cleaning, a good argument would start right away because this question always divided people as far as I see. I'm going to share some of my thoughts while we are moving forward with this process, but if I'm being honest, for me, both ways make sense and most of the time we, as end users, make this so much more complicated as it really is. Anyways, what I like the most about Bleeding Rim is its gel-like formula which gets the product to stick on the surface very well and thanks to this I could leave that on for 4 minutes without a single drop being wasted on the floor. I didn't find any information regards using this in direct sunlight, but seeing how thick Bleeding Rim is, I wouldn't be worried too much. Although today isn't really a sunny day in Ireland, in fact, guess what? Yes, it's raining. The wheel looks much better already, and once the iron particles have been removed, I continue with an APC and brush, clean up the tire, barrel and fender, then agitate all surface to make sure there is absolutely no dirt left. As I said earlier, I'm doing two slightly different approaches and on the next wheel, you are going to see the completely opposite way than at the first wheel, meaning start with the rinse off, continue with the APC and brush, then once it's done, spray on bleeding rim and let it well alongside with agitation and what you can see here is that the product immediately reacts on the brake disc and turns red, while less, almost no visible color changing effect happens on the face of the wheel, which is absolutely normal and that's what you should usually expect when you are using an iron and fallout remover right after you properly clean the wheels, because there are much less iron particles being left behind on the surface. With that being said, you can see again how thick bleeding rim is even on wet surface. But I personally think using any kind of iron and fallout remover on dry surface will make that more powerful because it reacts with the water which is diluting that further as well. But this is only my opinion, feel free to share yours, I'm sure we're gonna read different opinions but that's what it's all about. Either way, I really enjoyed using Bleeding Rim and I think it is a very competitive product on the market, especially if we are considering the price for a 600ml bottle, not to mention its unique consistency which was one of my favorite features. Once the wheels are clean, move on to the previous stage with the pink snow foam and start with a quick rinse off. If you are looking at the water behavior, you can easily tell that this beamer has some protection applied and the owner of the car confirmed that as well, it has a ceramic coating applied. 
so the quad champion might boost its properties further after the pink snow foam we will see. The pH neutral pink snow foam comes in a 1 liter bottle with a beautiful cherry scent. Also the measurement on the side of the bottle is a cool thing to have. You can use this snow foam in different dilutions from 1 to 10 to 1 to 100 but I go with the usual 1 to 10 in the MJJC Foam Canon Pro which takes it 100 milliliter of product added to 900 milliliter of water. I didn't see that small red rubber part is missing from the lens, so while I was shaking it, the mixture went all over on my hand and I can tell you that it was really easy to remove off my hands without absolutely no stains being left. I was expecting a bit more pink if I'm being perfectly honest with you, but either I didn't shake the lens well, hence the leaking I mentioned, or I should have added a bit more product, but there is definitely a slightly pink shade added to this really nice and thick foam. The rain is getting heavier, so we need to move the beamer inside then continue the foaming there. The cherry scent of this snow foam is very very nice, even the leads around me notice that as well. The snow foam smells Having a great scent is top priority for me, and if that's important to you, well, you are going to love this for sure. As the weather kept being cooler, I was able to let the snow foam dwell for at around 10 to 12 minutes, and while that's doing its job, I went around the car with a brush on those areas, where I won't be able to get in properly with the wash mitt later on. Once that has been done, rinse off the snow foam which comes off effortlessly and overall left me with a very good user experience so far. So it's time to move on to the contact wash where I'm going to use the quad shampoo which sounds a very interesting product by reading the label. This shampoo claims to leave a high gloss finish with a hydrophobic layer and UV protection on the paintwork. The recommended dilution ratio is between 50 to 100 ml of product per 5 liter of water and in the bucket I will have around 15 liters water, so I'm adding just a bit more than 150 milliliter product, which is closer to the minimum recommendation. I didn't expect for kind of a watery consistency from a shampoo, but more or less I was able to manage the plant quantity into the bucket. As you can see, quad shampoo has a light blue color, but I couldn't recognize any added scent, it sort of smells nothing or more likely solventish if that makes sense. And in all fairness, I don't expect long-lasting suds from this certain product, because these kind of shampoos which contain or claim any kind of protection are known to be less sudsy compared to regular shampoos. But so far, what shampoo seems to be promising, so we will see how this goes. If I'm being totally honest, I was expecting less suds during the process, so I'm quite surprised, but happy with the amount of suds being on the paintwork by this shampoo. But when I continued with the new wash mitt on the other side of the car, my initial expectation about the suds came true. So I revived the quartz shampoo with a bit of water and kept going, and other than seeing or having less suds, the slickness on the surface was still very good. The water sheets faster off the panels compared to the beginning, so quartz shampoo could be a good maintenance wash product on coated cars or for someone who wouldn't like to bother too much spending extra money or time but wants to have some sort of protection easily applied. If we do the math, the 770ml bottle offers around 5 washes and you add an extra layer of protection with each use. I nearly finished the exterior wash of this beamer, but this was my very first time to wash someone else's car, so I really wanted to give my best to make the paintwork pop, while don't leave any missed spots behind. 
So after drying off the car, I use Tenzi Quick Shine, which is a very cost effective, easy to use quick detailer and aims to elevate the gloss level while remove stains and streaks after contact wash. When I said easy to use, I literally meant that you spray it on, spread and buff it off until the surface goes slick and as you can tell, a little product goes a long way, but Quick Shine is a really forgivable quick detailer to use, even if you over apply that a bit, thanks to its streak free formula, which really makes the product beginner friendly. It also has a nice orange scent and gives that little extra pop to the paintwork which I wanted. Next up is cleaning the gloss, and while there is usually not too much to say about a glass cleaner, what I really like about clean glass is the ease of use, longer evaporation time and streak free finish, and Tenzi offers this for an affordable price. Tenzi has a great range of interesting products to choose from for car care enthusiasts and professional detailers as well, and I really enjoyed using them today to transform this lovely BMW, and I hope you enjoyed watching this exterior wash as well. If so, please give this video a thumbs up, if this was your first time here at Road to Detailing but you are into car care, consider to subscribe to the channel for videos like this, and turn on the notification bell to be the first who knows when a new video drops. Talk to you in the comment section down below, thanks for watching! Thanks for being here, take care and see you soon.